Welcome back to another episode of the Miami Heat Chronicles. My name is Amir, joined today by Martel. You can find Martel at the Miami Heat Zone podcast. How are you doing today, Martel? Subscribe. I'm doing well today, guys. Make sure you guys go to Amir's channel as well. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that share button. He's pushing to 2,000 subscribers. I'm pushing to 4,000 subscribers. Make sure you guys show us some support. Thank you again. And so, Martel, for today's episode, I want to talk about, again, free agency. So we know next week is the NBA draft, and we can go in any direction with that. We know we need a backup point guard. We know we might need a wing to replace Caleb Haywood, perhaps as well, and then also a backup big. But let's talk a little bit about free agency because there was some news and there was a player that um, popped up that I think could be interesting for the Miami Heat. So this player was a former lottery pick, and apparently he is going to be turning down his $5.4 million player option for next season, and he's going to become an unrestricted free agent. And the player that I'm talking about is the Indiana Pacers Jalen Smith. And so Michael Soto from Hoops Hype said he indeed will decline his option. We know that players can now negotiate with their team in terms of free agency um, versus typically waiting until June 30th when they can have conversations internally. And so he played a really good role with the um, Pacers this year. We know the Pacers made it to the the Eastern Finals after picking up Siakam. And I think he could be a good fit um, next to Bam Adebayo. And, you know, he is a good young-ish player. I mean, he's younger than Bam. So what are your thoughts on his game, his fit, and do you think he's actually attainable for the Miami Heat? So he might be a little bit too pricey, but I think that if you can get a guy like Jalen Smith, because people don't realize a lot of people are saying Brooke Lopez or Valanchunas, you know, and all these other guys who are kind of unrealistic only because on the open market, they can get a lot more money. You know, they have the, you know, they have the basketball history. They have the experience, you know, they're proven players. I think that Jalen Smith at 24 years old, if we can get him at the back of big or next to Bam and about at times, you know, he's averaging 9.9 points, 5.5 rebounds, 1.0 assists, and he's shooting 59.2% from the field. You know, like I said, at 24 years old, he fits this Bam at a bio build going forward. He could potentially be our backup big for the future. Is he an all-star? Does he put up crazy points? No. But we still need size. We still need athleticism. Bam at a bio is exhausted by the time that the playoffs come around every single year. We need someone to help elevate not only Bam, but just just try to take some of the pressure off of Bam and Abayo throughout the regular season. I know it didn't really work out with Thomas Bryant, but I think a young Jalen Smith is a perfect fit at that backup five position. Yeah, I don't know. Do you think we would offer him a, a mid-level exception? I mean, that's kind of exactly what his option is anyway. Like, So do you think he's going to warrant a like significant pay raise or a small pay raise? Because he's making 5.4. I mean, he only played 18 minutes, 17 minutes per game. He, he averaged... 10 points, five rebounds, like you said. He did shoot 42% from three, which is which is huge. You know, the Miami Heat need help with that. And anytime the Miami Heat is a top five, 10, um, per three-point shooting percentage team, we usually do well. Like um, last year, I think we, you know, oscillated back and forth, but like I think we ended up like 13th or 14th, which is not good enough. So um, do you think we can get him for the mid-level or do you think it will be priced out? Like I said, I know that a lot of teams aren't really jumping to get Jalen Smith. I still think he needs to prove himself just a little bit more as a proven NBA player. But like I said, if he's really the only backup big that we can get, I don't see why the Miami Heat wouldn't at least negotiate or at least try to take a look at him. Because like I said, it's very hard to find backup bigs. You know, I know that he's only 6'9", but like I said, we need athleticism and we need some youth behind Bam Adebayo. Yeah, because right now we have uh, technically Kevin Love. Right, because yeah, and I don't think that Orlando Robinson is going to work. You know, for a guy who has really not gotten that much playing time outside of those what seven games that he did when Bam was hurt. You know what I mean? And I'd rather take Jalen Smith because, like I always say, I would rather take NBA talent. Don't get me wrong; I know that the undrafted thing works sometimes, but I would always rather go with NBA guys, guys who've been on other teams, guys who have had playing time. You know, rather than just have Orlando Robinson sit on the bench and then Bam out of bio and Kevin Love have to carry the 82 game season, which it's kind of unrealistic for them to do that. Yeah, I don't know if Orlando's going to get a contract. I think he has like sometime in end of June or sometime in July. I forgot, but um, 
we have to make a decision before a certain date um, in the next, let's say, two to four weeks of whether or not we're going to keep them or not. Um, so that will be just more detrimental that we do have someone because we'll be stuck with Thomas Bryant only. And he has a player option. And again, I mentioned the whole free agency piece where we can negotiate now after the NBA finals just finished on Monday, we can now understand like where he's at, right? He can kind of tell us like, Hey, like I kind of want to go test out free agency because I want more playing time. I want to go somewhere else where I could play more minutes perhaps or you could say hey like i'm gonna resign so expect this like they're close they're talking behind closed doors so we don't know we could potentially lose both of them and if we lose both of them then we're not a big team anyway and we always talk about we need size so him and kevin love coming off the bench backing what i would assume if we don't make any other moves really we're gonna have a front court of jovic and bam which i'm okay with like right i want jovic to develop and you know he is a good four next to bam at a bio um, again, with Jimmy Bam and you know Terry and those guys in the lineup, he is going to be playing more of a role. He's not going to be um, free to like you know handle the ball and play make and whatnot. But still, that's a good piece next to Bam. And then having Kevin and Jalen coming off the bench versus Kevin and Orlando or Kevin and Thomas, like now you have a, two dynamic guys because both those guys can spread the floor. And then of course Jalen's a little more athletic than a Thomas Bryant and Orlando Robinson as well. So that could be more of a fun fit coming off the bench. So we'll see what happens. Um, I don't expect the Miami Heat to get any real impact type of players in free agency, again, because we don't have any any money. So it's got to come through the draft or possibly a significant trade, whether that involves a Terry Rozier, a Tyler Hero, a Jimmy Butler, a Duncan Robinson. Who knows what's going to happen this offseason. Um, but yeah, thanks for hopping on, Martel. Um, we'll hop on. Maybe next week, I know we're going to be doing a roundtable with the guys um, and a special draft episode. Don't forget to tune in on that. We'll be doing that most likely Tuesday, the day before the draft. But it seems like you guys are enjoying these Miami Heat Chronicle episodes between Martel and I. So we'll continue to record new episodes for you and, and we should be back next week. So thanks again for hopping on, Martel. Appreciate it. Thank you, man.